Hi, this is me. I'm really tired right now, just because of sheer sure, laziness and sweaty. We just took the trash out. It's pretty much overflowing. Try to smush the lead down, but I'm not trying to push on anything. Who knows? Glass needles and nasty stuff. I'm not trying to touch it because I know it's not mine either. Um, shared facility. I have the recycling. It's full. More people put stuff in there last night. Someone just keeps filling it with big old boxes the size of the recycling and not breaking them down. You broke them down, I could empty out all the recycling in my house. So my boyfriend even started smushing down the um, the little bottles. I wanted to save some of the big ones and refill them, um, especially if we didn't drink out of them. And, uh, so I'm talking about body shaming today. I'm really mad. So many comments about my own weight, my own thighs, other people. Someone said uh, mental well wellness was low with certain people, overweight. And this guy on YouTube, I allegedly, the guy Dan on I allegedly, which I probably had said you should watch, is saying, oh, no wonder. It's like, oh, you want to date me? No, you fatty or whatever. Like he said these derogatory remarks. And I don't even remember the words. You get the point. And I'm like, are you kidding? And then I'm watching, um, what's it called? Glam, razor glam or something where she's, at first it was like, oh, somebody had a bunch of weaves and like they're bald or they're like bald or like bald or almost completely bald. It's like a little bit of hair and she was doing some cuts, straighten and then like cover ups, um, uh, coloring and there's one she had a weave but then it started being like people with natural black hair long African hair and all of them will say swipe left on it there'll be old ladies young people all of them will say swipe left on it and I get disappointed because I see these women with their natural black hair whether it's just a little Afro, like, well-groomed, clean, um, maybe they're sick, maybe they're sick with, um, physical disease that's autoimmune or something, messing with the hair, hypothyroid, maybe they're dealing with the, some people had 20, 30, 40 years of weaves and wigs that caused the alopecia, scar tissue, and I can understand she's trying to give someone some confidence so they don't feel like they have to wear a wig, so they could grow into their hair with that style and have it not natural because they're getting straighteners and colors, but have it be at least their hair. So it's so hard when you see these beautiful faces and this beautiful hair, or you see this beautiful ponytail, natural black hair, and she keeps saying swipe left, swipe left. And it makes me want to cry every time I see that because I see, I don't date women, but I see some beautiful person that doesn't matter what their hair is like. Maybe if their hair is a certain way, they get like, people get cocky, they have it too long or too blonde or you know, people get start getting cocky but that person grew up lived got educated got employed had kids had partners broke up had parents die and that to me is their heart and who they are and not because they didn't get their hair straightened and bleached platinum blonde like it just breaks my heart and I know a lot of people would not feel attracted to someone with long afro. I just showcased one lady that looked part Asian, so she had real thick, strains, black hair. And they're just like so proud. It's like, that's what you want everybody to look like. And that lady was born that way. I mean, it's not, maybe she had, maybe she didn't have a weed. And it just breaks my heart. <laughs> Because I know what people say about me, and it, it's like, there's so many aggressions and microaggressions. There's a picture on Facebook this morning about these three women from Guadalupe, or I don't know where. They looked African descent, and they were wearing long dresses. I don't know if they had hats on or not. And they, people are like, oh, they look smart. Oh, they look like they had a good life. Oh, that's when people dress a certain way, like, and I've seen other pictures, modest, and, um, handmade clothes that weren't revealing, like, like, there was, like, the people dressed now, so, 
if someone in the inner city wants to wear tight, tight pants and like a revealing shirt with cutouts in it, what does that matter? If like, like you're a human and why is it okay for skinny white women who look like the same body type as a man from the background, they're allowed to walk around. I see some bunch of these women with fake blonde hair and bare midriffs in the grocery store wearing sweatpants. Like, like nobody's, you know, everyone's staring at them like, oh, oh, oh. where somebody who, like me, no matter how skinny I was because of my genetics, I have big hips and thighs. I have big um, chest, not big, but bigger than most people. And no matter if I'm skinny, and my stomach gets fat when I'm stressed out. And it's usually when I'm around men. So it's like the same people that want to see me look a certain way stress me out so much that I get fat. I gained 100 pounds eating salads with no dressing. Working out in martial arts three times a week, formally. Taking the stairs, always parking on the sixth floor of the parking garage, taking the stairs, taking the scare stairs in college. I was going Monday through Friday uh, inside the parking garage and inside the college. I think it might have been only three or four stories, but those flights are double the regular household stair. So you go up one, one, and that's one floor. Um, I did exercises at home. I ate like a banana, two handfuls of nuts, and um like an orange in the evening and I may sometimes would have had like a like a scrambled egg and maybe some um, Ezekiel bread and I ate a hundred pounds and I was working out at home I had my exercise bike and I was taking walks with my kids and I was swimming a salad 200 calories worth of nuts a banana and an orange and everybody said that's why you're fat you see you eating an orange at church on wednesday nights that i was like that's all i had for dinner i was probably under calories i was weighing every i was weigh, i had a food scale i was weighing my food i was <laughs> i was on my fitness or my fitness pal guys and well, my son had some issues with schooling and sleeping and stuff, and it was me working out on the Wii. I had gone to weight loss groups, still taking the stairs everywhere, exercising. Um, eventually, when I started dating, I started going to the um, community center. And when the times I was stressed out, I'd gain 10 to 15 pounds. Not changing, not decreasing exercise, not increasing food. I haven't eaten meat, I haven't eaten bread. All my neighbors tell me how fat I am and they're also my patients in my one neighborhood. Like, you need to stop eating meat and bread. Like, they're like, I eat vegetables. I eat this. Like, you also have a chronic disease that's like killing you and making you waste away. And you're still, your BMI is still like 10 points higher than mine. You have no business criticizing me. I have, people are like, fat people shouldn't eat avocados. You're fat because you ate a half a banana for breakfast and 10 almonds. That's your problem. You need to eat more vegetables. You need to do that. Every time I eat a salad, I gain three pounds that day. Whenever I went to my weight loss groups, if I went to a restaurant the night before and ate just a salad and drank a water, I always gained. If I ate salmon or meat with the salad, I would either not gain or lose weight. So I'm, in the past two days, I've been hearing so much about body shaming and uh, natural would posting the people that are making the cards or it's a couple groups on Facebook or the cards that say, I, I don't, don't weigh me unless I need to be weighed. I've dealt with that a lot when people say, don't tell me my weight or let me turn around. My doctor here is a, should address me as doctor as a nurse that's like, you're fat. He spent an hour yelling at me. I tried to tell him that I was in a car accident, that I couldn't exercise. I was exercised. So the thing is, I gained the 80, uh, 100 pounds, but I was also a math user. And my dad said that's the only time in my life that I looked good. So I was a teenage um, anorexic and bulimic 
and then I was homeless, and then I was taking pills to to reduce my appetite. And when I was homeless, I had no money for food, so I was really skinny. And after that, I'm surprised I got pregnant with my daughter, and then my son. I was so malnourished. I had open sores from bug bites on my legs. My teeth all started in the back started breaking away. I was so malnourished. The only thing, if you do any lab test, any physical exam, they're going to look at my weight as being high, but the only problem that I have is malnutrition from vitamin D and iron. So the only, so I should be eating more types of different types of foods and I have to maintain my B12s um, level, my B12, my other B vitamins. Um, there's no diabetes, no hypertension, um, no kidney issues, no liver issues. The teeth are generally healthy besides the fact that they keep refusing to deal with my teeth. So I'm just crying for myself. Um, it sucks when you lose 50 pounds and people start holding the doors open saying, oh, how are you going, ma'am? And it sucks when you're fat, when you're carrying boxes in a building, they just let the door slam. You drop all your books on the ground at the library and these, this white couple just like sneer at you. They don't like, I am like, oh my, like, I almost hurt myself. Oh my God, sir. Can I help you pick this up? Let me help you. Like, and because I'm black, I hands, I'm not trying to pickpocket you. I just try to like courtesy courtesy is anyone in that much of a hurry to get in the library that they can't even help you I, I've got hurt and robs carjacked all this stuff and not one person would help me out in the wild that's why I'm a freaking prepper um, this one lady like, oh you're good um, during the beginning of the pandemic you're fat at least that when the food runs out in society you'll last longer than most of us like <laughs> and they're telling me, going back to the pictures online where they keep saying, oh, they're well-dressed. Oh, that's when people knew how to act and blah, blah, blah. And uh, telling us that those people look smart. They're saying, most 100% of black people I know are smart. But it's microaggressive to be like, they look smart, but everyone else doesn't. It's like, oh, you're very articulate with your words. Well, guess what? I grew up in the United States of America, and I took English class, and I sat in class, and I passed. What are you, ex what are you expecting from me? Like, you know, like, my parents did the same thing, their parents did the same thing. Like, what kind of, are you expecting me to be talking like I'm, like, some kind of drug dealer somewhere? Or some kind of, like, you know, like... I mean, people that and my relatives would talk in like slang and use certain accents. And when they go back in their house, they speak just like I'm speaking, like the people on the news are speaking, like some people, some of them have a little bit of Southern twang going on, but some of that, a lot of that is a front to keep from being bullied and hurt because people want, society wants you to look like and talk like and be like them. So I got to go to this place. So we're going to look, we're going to change gears. I applied for a job even though I'm self-employed and unemployment I applied 14 months ago I guess it was 13 months ago for January 3rd 2021 I haven't received a penny I haven't they're telling me to send a w-2 from my job or 1099 I ain't got no 1099 from the dang job so I'm gonna look up LabCorp and I'm gonna see Let's let's pull this out. So I have a bunch of stuff I need to do, and I kept looking for my patient, um, and I got to double check. So I do consults with people, and I do um, free consults. So I don't chart that in electronic health record because I haven't gotten the paperwork to authorize that. I can do a verbal um, now with telehealth, and I need to send these people um, the documents online. I'm sorry, I'm gonna just keep crying. I mean, let me make sure that they didn't, these people didn't send me another thing. So, I made a new folder for this company. And, here it is. Okay, so drug screen, I didn't even print it out. Alright, so, 
It looks like there's a barcode. Alright, so we gotta show the barcode on my mobile device. I'm glad I read this, because my emails aren't... This only contains a barcode, it must be scanned. I'm gonna go. Children are not really allowed in the testing area. So before the 25th at 4 p.m. Expiration <laughs> date and time is not an appointment. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna print this sucker. Like, I don't wanna print it, but I'm gonna print this thing out. So there's some people that are trying to find a dentist that they're not being shamed because they're trans. And, um, I don't even see the bill. I don't see the barcode on this piece of paper. Let me stretch it out. So, structures for service provider, one year and, oh shoot, I just went to the toilet. All right, so I'm gonna print this even though I don't see a barcode. <laughs> Um, I might not need the barcode. I don't see a barcode. Whatsoever. So what we're going to do is go print this out. And then we're going to do the, um, click the one that says barcode. They're, they're shutting off this parking lot. I'm the only one in there. Looks like they got like seven spots blocked up. Let me see if I can go and come back. I still have to take a shower. Hello? So we're just going to use the printer that's already plugged in. I'm being kind of lazy. I keep on plugging that one. So, I'll go ahead and print this. So, a lot of people say, your weight is part of your physical exam. You have to take your weight in. It's like, every time I gain 100 pounds, lost 100 pounds, gain back 50, um, I'm still, um, I'm, I'm at least 50 pounds lighter than I was at my all-time high. And those raw kelp noodles, I think, are what's causing me to re retain this, um, and so, oh, I was talking earlier about the, um, hold on, I see it blinking, I don't see it printing, about the um, eating disorders and the homelessness and the substance use, and then, um, eating salads causes me to gain three pounds, eating foods that I'm allergic to causes me to gain one to three pounds a day, um, certain foods, like, something, like, I have these dressings that have some kind of weird xanthan gum or something in it and they're causing me to be like like i've not been eating them but i'm trying to eat that so that i can not be so lazy about my salad eating and it'd be better if i had something to crumble up on top and this and that but it's oh here's the barcode so it wouldn't show up until i press print so we'll go ahead and print that and then i'll save it as a pdf so this is going to the brother you know yeah, the brother 6200. I did make a mistake on one of my videos. I'm not even sure that I posted it, and it was about the, um, I called it the, uh, not, so it's actually a Canon printer that's behind me. There's a brother here, there's a brother there, and then there's an Epson scanner. And I said that the, uh, that this portable printer was the Epson, but it's a Canon. It's cheap. It's okay. It doesn't. It doesn't copy. Um, I've seen people at with health of all ages, of all sizes. Um, Joey. Uh, some cultures, the bigger you are, the more you're desired because either certain ones it's a little bit vain because you look wealthy everyone else can't afford to eat that much you look healthy enough to be royalty because you can afford as much food as you want um you have people prepare all that food have the fuel like it's like a status symbol some cultures it's a sign of being able to 
become pregnant and some of this is old fashioned cultures, um, be able to nurse the children. Um, you got these big boobs and big hips that you're going to be able to deliver the babies and not both of you die in childbirth, you know, because like, someone got stuck and it's not necessarily about your hips as it's your birth canal, but still you have um, some studies that show the omegas, um, what's it, omega-3 or omega-9, um, some of the omegas, healthy omega fats are produced in the bodies of um, women with larger hips and that is uh, contributing to healthier brain function, which is increasing intelligence. Um, so the people that I see uh, since I'm in my 40s, everything since 45 has now in these surveys, it's 45 to 54. It's like, ooh, I used to be in the 34 to 44 or 35 to 44 um, age limit. I'm like, so everything you guys see, these young people in the gyms full, the YMCA all through COVID, everything shut down. I can't even get it, my dental health clean, but you could be in the treadmill and in a class with a bunch of people running for three hours, breathing all over everyone. Like, I just don't understand why I can't get a 30 minute teeth cleaning. Um, but whatever, you know, it's like aerosolized them. But, uh, I end up like knowing that there's some, either your metabolism, to some of the people that called me fat from eating an orange. The thing was when I went to church on Wednesdays, that's all I had to eat for dinner. Cause I brought it with me left over for my lunch and we'd go straight, pick up the kids. I'd give them like, maybe we'd share some sardines, get in the car and drive an hour and a half to get to the place. And then I'd eat the orange cause it was seven, eight o'clock at night and I was hungry and I had to go home, put my kids to bed and there's no making dinner. There's no going to McDonald's like everyone else. The skinny people, they went to McDonald's and this lady was like 5'10", 5'8", 5'10", 125 pounds, like on the dot her whole life. And she ate like a pig. So, you got no business if, a lot of times if you eat normal, say you're younger, your metabolism isn't perimenopausal, you eat and you Maybe you eat one more cookie than your best friend or your twin, and that 100 calories adds up. And then over years, you would be significantly heavier. Um, so that's part of the, the fine line if you're not naturally high metabolism, where you feel like you're starving all the time or you're drinking mad amounts of coffee. People use amphetamine um, to take advantage of getting their health provider to, to prescribe them amphetamines and all these different things people do. Um, I know someone that was obsessed with working out and she said she was taken in ephedrine for many, many years. And then she had like infertility issues and all these different things. Like, you know, I didn't do that. Like, but you're going to look at me because you're fit and your husband's a multimillionaire and you're able to pay for the gym and you have a big house with a big yard where you, if anything, can go back and forth to your garden and be lifting up bags of dirt and flower pots. Getting, getting, having a yard and house that's big enough gives you a ton of exercise. And if you're doing some of the work, you don't even have to do all the work. You know, even loading a dishwasher and unloading it and having cabinets to reach up and put it in, we don't have any cabinets. We don't have, uh, any, like, say we had to wash a couple things and leave it there until it's time to use it. And then maybe, like, try to put something somewhere and everything falls on the ground. Like, what's the point of that? Like, it merely makes a difference in your movement and, like, being able to carry a caddy that you store somewhere into the bathroom to scrub the shower. If you don't have the money to have a place with a shower or a bathtub, then you're not going to, you're not going to do that. And you're still going to have to wash up and clean up and Maybe people living in their car, you think, oh, they're outside in the world, they can walk up and down the street. But the more they walk around, the more likely someone's going to tow their car or still stop, break in and steal their personal belongings, you know. Um, I don't have a place to walk. It's like being in a hotel and not wanting to leave your purse and jewelry. And then you're like, this makes it hard to go out and go swimming and go use the gym because then you feel like you got to try to stuff everything in a fanny pack. Like, you're not free. Um, it's really hard, you know, that's partly because of crime. If you live on the water, you can go paddle bowling and sailing and canoeing and fishing. And... A lot of people I know that live on the water here also have full-size swimming pools. 
got barbecue grills, you got a patio, you can sweep, it, even the, the action, you have a, like an apartment where you could sweep off the porch, the front and back porch, even if it's inside. Those exercises, that's another 13 calories, another 23 calories. That two grapes you ate earlier, boom, calories burnt. So now you're not going to gain. They would say, well, if you don't, if you don't eat, if you don't, at recreate or your job doesn't require you to do a lot of physical labor, then you don't need to eat as much. Well, if you don't eat a bare minimum, you're going to just store everything. If I'm at a 700, 700 calories a day, I'm going to save everything. I'm not going to, I'm going to get fatter doing that. If I'm, if my good metabolism is at 1200 and I don't measure it, measure calories and I'm only eating salads, a little tiny little teaspoon of olive oil, Again, 200 calories, I'm nuts. That's going to be um, what I do. Study, research, tape stuff up, get stressed out. Um, I'm fat, and I did a urine analysis yesterday, and I had ketones, and my stomach was growling all night. So I'm, I'm, in a keto, I'm not on a ketogenic diet, but my body was desperate, and it was breaking down my, my fat. It's breaking down my, I hope it wasn't breaking down my muscle. Uh, it's breaking down itself to get calories, to stay alive. I used to do fasting. Some of it was fasting and praying. Some of it was fasting. And that was the last extreme thing I did um, that I think tipped my metabolism to nothing. Because I'd go like, I think I'd do like one or two days complete fast. And then I would do like, one raw food day, maybe two raw food days, and then I'd have like a day that was like, eat what you want, and then I had like, leading up to the fast day, and then the fast, like I'd go through this every single week while I was working out. Did I lose weight? No. <laughs> But did I gain weight eventually back and forth? Um, I, I lost weight steadily when I was starting to get into dating. I went, the lowest was 128, but I was steady at like 132, which was the lowest I'd been since being clean and sober. Um, like since I gained and then lost. If you're homeless and you're on methamphetamine and you're smoking all the time, it's easy. You're not, you're not even eating. Uh, it's just really messed up. Nobody wants to talk about um, metabolism. Like as a doctor, I would get into all these hormone testing, cortisol testing, um, female hormone testing. I would get into um, reducing stress as being higher than exercise and and food intake. Um, reducing stress is gonna decrease your body, um, like the risk factors of heart attack and obesity and diabetes. And don't quote me on that, but that stress is very hard on the body. Um, African Americans have way more stress because of uh, systemic racism. And that doesn't matter how you look, how clean cut and well dressed and your hair and nails done and you're living in the suburbs and you're driving a spotless car. That is never going to be as low as a non-black person, um, unfortunately. So the the increased levels of uh, not um, being able to get pregnant and uh, premature labor are really high in African Americans, really high. And you can watch um, when the bow breaks. So we're going to get on here, and it looked like there was. I said I was going to save this, so we're going to go ahead and print to PDF. I'm going to get jump in the shower. It's 8.06. Uh, this is non-DOT. So this is going to be under... So I'm going to make a brand new... Um, what's it called? Uh, Starts with an F, like a brand new folder. 
um, a lot of my stress is from PTSD, and that's caused by my relatives being abusive, including my dad, who also calls me fat. If you're over 75 pounds and you're at least 5'5", five five, he will call you fat. And he's going to make fun of you if you're over that. If you're a football player and you're eating crap and you got this big beer belly and you're smoking and drinking, he's going to be like, you're a hero. He's got body dysmorphic towards himself and towards other people. And if my son was uh, had kind of a barrel chest when he was born, so he's maintained that, this broad, and my dad would be rude to him and me. Um, just because of your, that's, I mean, if you touch my hips and my butt, there's bone. There's about three-fourths, like my back, three-fourths an inch of fat. Some people want no fat, or they want to add solid muscle, but if I was back at 225 or 275 or 300, I see some people like that smiling a lot more than me when I was really skinny, working at Pizza Hut and doing food demos seven days a week, running around 10,000 calories a day or 10,000 steps a day. I was pretty unhappy. <laughs> I didn't have time to eat. I was eating dark chocolate as a drug to maintain I keep testing, I keep putting my core and then I keep forgetting it. <sighs> Speaking of food, I haven't ate anything. <gasps> There's trucks next to my um, vehicle. I better go move it. Uh-oh. They had certain spots marked off, but my little car is... I'm gonna move it because I gotta go somewhere, but I'm gonna take a shower first. Bye, guys. Um... I didn't even try it. My hair is really dry. Um, I was tempted to have this lady cut all my hair off and put a straightener and a color in it, but I'm like, the reason my hair is so damaged is because of the straighteners and curls. And someone used two big jars, maybe they weren't that big, but two big jars, professional size jars of relaxer in my hair when I was a kid. My hair was um, short. And there's two small braids and it was broken off just from being African and using a lot of oil. And this part had a little bit straighter. They put two big jars in my hair and it burned and they kept it in burning for like hours. They said, your hair is real coarse and thick. We got to use two jars. And ever since, my hair has never been as healthy as it was when I was a child. But it wasn't healthy and it wasn't ever long. And it was a little bit when I was, um, my first year, my first couple of years of college, it was actually a little bit longer. Um, I think it's just because I studied so much and I braided it that doing that, um, getting that scalp stimulation and the oils, since blacks don't have a lot of oils, the natural oils would be going from the scalp down to the tips. And I was also like a cannabis user. <laughs> and so I could eat what I want and stay lanky and riding my bike and people didn't judge me because of my weight. I was anorexic bulimic so I thought I was fat. I hated being anywhere over 130. I had to throw up even water because I was over 130. I just so it's hard to be fat shamed when you know you lost 100 pounds and gained it only for the sheer fact that you're dating someone and you're a raw food mostly vegan that eats salads and very little um, unfortunately, I'm not even eating that much fruit, and maybe that's part of my problem, so, and maybe I, maybe my eat, not eating enough, but those noodles, I think, constipate me too, which is also another thing from sexual assault and abuse, it's hard to use the toilet, and you're not ever feeling safe in or out of your house, especially when you're abused and raped inside of a house, your house, or someone at your partner's house, or a date, when you're drunk, you're drunk because your parents beat you, someone in your family sexually assaulted you, you go to a party, you, you're already drunk because you're drunk, and then people rape you, and then you're trying to be fat so that you're societally unattractive. 
you're a hoarder and have a messy house because you're unattractive because that keeps hoarding keeps people out of your house if they break in your house it's harder for them to get to you i didn't figure that out when i was a teenager if you gain a lot of weight after being abused and raped that keeps somebody away from you or it might turn them off so they're not attracted to you and i have that problem whatever my diet is and i was skinnier when i was eating meat Peace, guys.